I do not think I would be open to talking about my story a year ago from today. It was still a really tough time about a year ago. I was still not completely over what I experienced. One, two, three up for Oregon here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Oregon trailing seven, nothing here. And this is a scary scene. That ball was hit very hard. I don't remember anything after I got hit besides blood running down my face and down my neck and it was really warm and it was covering my jersey. That's all that I remember. Being out on the field at all times, really not the best option, but it continues to happen because half the time money and wins are more important than well-being. Jake, Charlie, come on, come here, come here, let's go, come on, let's go. Charlie sometimes gets scared of his leash, I don't know why. I don't know if something happened to him or what, but. Oh, hold on, wait. So the white one is Jake and the brown one's Charlie. They're both rescues, so I don't really know what they are, but. Um, Jake is a great Pyrenees lab, it looks like, and I don't know what Charlie is, so we'll figure it out. Jake was found on the side of the road, spooning his brother, and then Charlie was abandoned like three times, so I wanted them. Jake, come on, Jake. I wake up at about six o'clock every morning. Sometimes I'll walk them in between class and practice. Come on. And then I have practice around two every day. So it's pretty easy being a senior. My name is Paige Lowry. I am a senior pitcher at Oklahoma and I'm from Grimes, Iowa. I started playing softball at a really young age. I started with t-ball, pretty typical. I started pitching when I was about I'm gonna say nine or 10 years old. I wasn't a fan of pitching at first because I wasn't very good. And me being competitive, I'm not a big fan of things that I'm not good at. <laughs> I can't really think of a time where I felt I was good all of a sudden. It was kind of a gradual thing. I started getting recruited in about eighth grade. Coaches saw in me that I threw hard and I was always a little wild, but I threw in the upper 60s when I was a freshman in high school. I just blew fastballs past people, so my speed has always taken me places. I would say that's my biggest strength, pitching. My softball career leading up to my sophomore year at Missouri has been a journey. I think that my experience in high school helped me become mentally ready to play in college. I was a little overwhelmed at first because I didn't necessarily feel like I was prepared just because of the competition. I mean, a lot of people don't really come out of Iowa, like I mentioned, and I took that to heart and really wanted to represent in my community. But then once game started, I realized, oh, mentally I'm still prepared. Maybe physically I wasn't there yet, but I eventually got there. It is a beautiful Saturday morning here in Southern California and a great weekend for the Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic. Mary Nutter is always the most fun tournament, I feel like. The vibes are just good, the weather's nice in February, and I just always really look forward to going to that tournament. Earlier in the day, I had an ESPN interview with Holly Rowe, and she was asking me a bunch of questions, and she ended up asking the question, are you ever nervous about getting hit, or would you ever wear a mask? And I remember telling her that I was not scared, and that I would 
never wear a mask. And I actually think I mentioned that I would rather quit than wear a mask. In a matchup of two of the top 15 teams in the country, it's Paige Lowry in the circle for Missouri. One of the premier pitchers in the SEC. And we'll lead things off going against Alyssa Gillespie, the right fielder, first pitch. The Oregon game was a really good one for us. We were beating them, I believe, 7-0 to zero in the fourth inning, I think. I remember that we almost run ruled them at that time, and I was pitching a really good game. I felt great. Um, felt like I was throwing really hard, and we were just dominating, and then it all fell apart. First pitch goes off of Lowry's face. And this is a scary scene. That ball was hit very hard. My mom came running into the dugout and she told me that I was laughing hysterically and I was just pleading for them to put me back in and that they were gluing my eye up. Other than that, I think it was just people were kind of shocked and no one really knew what to do. I have never seen a competitor get hit in the face like that, suffer that kind of injury, and come back and play. I do not remember going back in the game besides the fact that I went out there without a mask and they made me put one on. That's all I remember from that whole thing. Um, I don't remember being scared. I don't remember throwing that next inning. Um, I know that I gave up a lot of runs and couldn't really throw a strike, but I don't remember any of that. When I first got back to the hotel after getting hit, I took a picture of it and I was shocked. I was like, what just happened to me? And it just hadn't really set in that that actually happened to me, but my eye was humongous about 10 minutes after I got hit, and then it just kept getting worse and worse for the next four-ish days. My eye was swollen shut the next morning, and I felt so sick the entire day. I just couldn't even open my eyes. I didn't go through any type of testing for a concussion. They didn't really do anything at the doctor. They didn't really look at me, so they just told me I had a hemorrhage in my eye and just kind of sent me on my way. So. I was really sick and I was still really hazy, but I just kind of went about my life like nothing happened. I remember not being able to concentrate in class and my memory went down a lot. Um, I lost a lot of my motivation just for life. Um, I don't know if it was exactly getting hit that led to it or if it was just other circumstances, but I felt very depressed and isolated and I didn't talk to very many people and I had no motivation to go to softball or class or anything and my GPA dropped a whole point. I just didn't feel like, like my conversations were real, like I was actually in these places. It was a really hard, weird feeling to describe, but I really just did not feel like I was even in this world. One, two, three, up for Oregon here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Oregon trailing seven, nothing here. First pitch goes off of Lowry's face, look out. When I watch this, I really do not remember any of this. And it's kind of weird to watch because it just doesn't even feel like this is actually me that this happened to. It's like watching a movie. <laughs> People are probably clapping like, what is she doing? <laughs> what am I doing? What we're seeing here is a phenomenal showing. My eye is swollen. On the other side, you can see it. Paige Lowry, you can see her face. The side of her left eye is swollen. It's amazing she can even see out of it right now. And she is back. Wow. She wants to pitch in this game. I've never seen it right after I got hit like this. This is unbelievable. Mike White, Coach White, is the first person that reached out to me about it. Like, Coach E didn't ever really ask if I was okay, but Coach White reached out and asked right away if I was okay. I got hit on a Sunday and 
we played Michigan on a Thursday. The strike zone was a little blurry, even though, even if I could have seen it, I probably wouldn't have been able to throw a strike anyway. But I started walking people uncontrollably, hitting people, giving up home runs because I would leave it down the middle. And that's when I got super scared. I was super jumpy. I just couldn't even, I could not control my pitches whatsoever. This quote I always use is, you can't heal where you became sick. So I decided getting to a new place would really help me mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and it really did. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I have you guys set up in the three mounds. So with the first mound, we're gonna throw a drop over the rope. I found out that, that Paige was interested in transferring in the summer. I didn't really know much about her except she was the girl that got hit. And I think that's why everybody knew her name. I did know she was left-handed, so that kind of sparked my interest as well because we are a program that likes our lefties and have success with them. You can see the direction she was going and just find out more. I think we just wanted to find out more about her. We are at individual practices and I'm just throwing a bullpen today. In the bullpen, we're doing random drills that we do almost every single day during our bullpens. So um, we're gonna be doing some airplanes and laterals, which you'll see later, and a bike workout. I don't know what I'm gonna focus on today. Um, it's different every single day, so I'm just gonna go with it and see what Coach Lombardi has planned. Um, can I throw the same thing again or it has to be different? Like okay, I can do five again? Yes. Five. The moment that Paige decided to come to Oklahoma, I think Coach Lombardi and I both probably screamed together like, oh, yeah. But we thought of this like a project. I didn't know how um, affected she truly was by this situation until she got here. And she went through the concussion protocol and our doctors didn't recommend, they told us for two months, you're gonna put her in the bullpen and you can work with her in there. She will not see hitters. So she came here in mid-August and the first hitter that she faced was probably early November. So we gave her that time to kind of get her her wits back and her feet back on the ground and it allowed coach Lombardi to start rebuilding Paige Lowry into the pitcher she is today. There's a lot of things that went into my decision to transfer. I wanted to go somewhere that I felt my well-being was placed in the forefront. Let's go Bosu with the regular ball and do that so many times. Back came down into a lunge. Paige was a little bit all over the place. Uh, I think the most important thing was just giving her an opportunity to settle in first. When I got to Oklahoma, my whole entire world changed. I had a lot of trust issues and just opening up to people was really hard for me. I would always constantly assure her that we love her as Paige Lowry, the person, not the pitcher. Softball is something that we do, is not who we are. They took the time to make sure I did recover 100% before throwing me out on the field. And that just made me respect them even more than I already did. Knowing that winning isn't as important to them as my well-being. And from that point forward, I wasn't scared and I wasn't frustrated and I just trusted the process. Um, it's about 8 o'clock in the morning and I'm heading to class. I'm going to writing for human relations, which is one of the classes from my major. Every time I have a research paper, I will do something with concussions just because it's something I'm passionate about and can find a lot of good information about, but also personally relate to, so. And in case you're wondering, it's not too cold to drink iced coffee still. <laughs> it tends to be iced coffee. 
because, I don't know, something about it tastes better. I never realized until it happened to me how serious head injuries are because, I mean, we have one brain and once we injure it, it doesn't really come back. It won't keep me from recruiting an athlete. And my feeling about face masks is absolute preference. I would never tell a player, don't wear a face mask. In this day and age, it's almost like when it all costs and I can't live, I can't live with myself with that. I feel like it's kind of becoming more well known about all the effects that can come from concussions, just because it's becoming more mainstream in the media. In the way of, are things still the same today? Working here at the University of Oklahoma, I would say definitely not. I think we're the leader in concussion protocol, and whether I wanted a player to come in or not, there is no way I would be allowed to let a player come in if she did not pass concussion protocol. I'm Dylan Baker. I'm one of the graduate assistant athletic trainers at the University of Oklahoma. We're demonstrating uh, this portion of our concussion protocol um, using the C3 logic system um, and kind of how we implement that, why we implement that uh, in the event that one of our athletes sustains a head injury. Um, so for this example, we'll use Katie as our athlete that has sustained a head injury. We suspect her for a concussion. Um, so what we'll do is we'll bring her in. You can have a seat right there. And then the first thing we'll do is we'll uh, start off with a graded symptom checklist. So all this is really going to be doing is uh, taking some of her symptoms on a scale of zero to six, six being extremely bad, zero being she doesn't have that symptom. First question, uh, zero to six, six being really bad, zero being you don't have it at all. Uh, do you have a headache? Three. Any pressure in your head? Okay, in this next part, I'm going to read you some series of numbers, and I'm going to have you read this series of numbers back to me in the reverse order. So if I say one, two, three, I'm going to have you say three, two, one. Okay. okay. One, seven, nine, five. Five, nine, seven, one. Good. Most fun part of the whole test. <laughs> if you can read the months of the year back to me in reverse order, starting with December. When I first got to Oklahoma, when I got my testing done and I found out that my percentiles were super low for concentration memory, I took it upon myself to really force myself to pay attention and put more time into memorizing the things I need to memorize and just my studies. When I got back out on the field after my two month period of taking time off, I still didn't necessarily feel 100%. I was still kind of just insecure, I think. And then I ended up finding a role in the closing role instead of starting most games. So when I started closing games, I felt more myself. She just stayed diligent, got stronger, threw it harder, but her ball was starting to move now. When you're watching the, the journey, um, you see it every day and you just think, oh, that's awesome, that's cool. I will never forget that story of a kid that was ready to say, I'm done, I don't want to play anymore, to being the reason, big reason, why we won it all. Winning the World Series is an indescribable feeling. Being on the bottom of the dog pile is the greatest feeling in the world, even if my arm was crooked and smashed underneath a bunch of people. But <laughs> that was insane, and I'm still pretty speechless about it, and it doesn't feel real. It only feels real because I have a ring now. This plaque I got because I got the save record for the NCAA this year. 
and the career save record for OU this year. So that's pretty cool. I didn't know I got a plaque for it, so I'm pretty excited. This is my jersey I wore when we won it. It's not washed. It's a little dirty, but I decided to put it in a box and frame it because it's awesome. <laughs> I didn't want it to go into storage, so I want to put it anywhere that it can be seen. I always grabbed my jersey like this to my face and covered it, so that's what all that dirt is. So I think about that, and then I just think about the dog pile because before I put it in the box, it's just so dirty. So I was like, I'm never watching this in my whole life. This is so cool. A little trophy, my individual trophy. It's super dusty. I need to dust it off, but. This is my individual trophy for the national championship. It all came full circle when I saw her at the World Series. It was full circle. And then see her at the bottom of the dog pile, I think is one of the, the visions I'll never forget. And I've had a lot of great visions, but I'll never forget that. I've been through so much, and I never in a million years thought that I would be right here right now. And then to think that we actually went and won it all, it's even crazier. I just, I, Never could have told you after I got hit that I would be even at Oklahoma, let alone winning a World Series. If I had never been hit, there's no way I'd be wearing a mask. But now that I know what can happen, I don't think it should be mandatory, but I do think that it's a really smart idea. I think it's her goal. It's almost her rite of passage when she can finally pitch with not having it on. Um, will that day come? I don't know. For that young lady to have a national championship ring on her finger is, is incomprehensible at times, if you would have seen where she was a year ago. I feel like after I got hit, I had this really bad chapter of my life, and when I got to Oklahoma, it closed and I started a new chapter. It's, it's the best chapter in the book so far.